Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. learners. It's me, Mrs. Reed Bright. I wanted to welcome you back to the art room. Now you know the art room is a place where we look at art and we talk about art and we learn about art and create art and we meet famous artists. And I wanted to welcome you back and have you say one, two, three, say hi to me. Ready? One, two, three, say hi to me. Hi, Mrs. Reed Wright. Hello, Mrs. Reed Wright. How'd you do, Mrs. Reed Wright? And our new hello song this week, I'm going to use two names when I sing it. And our song is here. It's called, We're Glad to See You Here. And it goes like this. We're glad to see you here. It gives us joy and cheer. Sure, it's true, we say to you, we're glad to see you here. Elena and Elias are here. Elena and Elias are here. Sure, it's true, we say to you, Elena and Elias are here. You put these back in my pocket for my two names tomorrow. Let me turn the page to orange because I do it in rainbow order, remember? Red on Monday, orange on Tuesday. Now, we have a new artist today because Friday we finished up with Giuseppe Archimboldo. Remember how we made his face out of fruits and vegetables? Let me bring out mine. I finished it up. Can I see which is, oh yes, because he had a potato nose. Did you finish yours? You know when you finish your artwork, you can always send me the picture of what you've made. I enjoy seeing what you've made. Now, it is Mystery Monday. And on Mystery Monday, I put three things in my suitcase and I bring them out and we try to figure out which two go together and which one doesn't belong. I kind of made this a little harder because I have some things and you'll think, well, those two things go together. Well, those two things go together, but I picked two especially that go together. Let me pull them out. The first thing is this. Have you ever seen anything like this? If I told you it was filled with water, would you know that? It's filled with water and it has a nozzle and if I tip it over, the water will come out. Let me set this over here because we'll be using it in a minute. And inside the suitcase is this thing. What could this be? It has a stem end and the end where the flower used to be and it has a little orange on it and green. I went looking for a special Japanese squash but nobody had them. I went five places. So I brought one sort of like it, and it is called an acorn squash. I'm going to set it up here while I bring out something else. And when I bring it out, I think you'll know which two go together. Come on out, and I'll put this knife up here. Look at this. I think you know what this is. We have some in the background, but this one I bought especially because I'm going to cut it open. What is this called? It starts with the letter P. It is a pumpkin. It's a small sugar pumpkin. And here's where they, when they picked it, they twisted and twisted and twisted because you can see the stem has been ripped off of the plant. And here is where its flower used to be. Let me set it on the trunk. I thought I'd put a piece of paper on here because I'm going to get a little dirty. And I'll put this on here so I don't get dirt all over the studio. Now, here's one of the things. Here is the second thing. And here is the third thing. Which two belong together? That's right, the two squash. The two squash go together because they both were growing. 
They both had stems and flowers. I'm going to set the acorn squash up here and the water up here. And most of the time when we cut a pumpkin, we cut it to make a face. But I am doing this as a science project. I'm cutting all the way around. Now this kind of knife you would not use yourself. This is something a grown-up needs to do for you. This knife, since I am a grown-up, I can use it. But you know, a knife is not really used by a child. They have those little tiny ones that come in the pumpkin stand and they are the ones that children can hold. But a big knife is not something you would use. But here I've cut all the way around and I'm taking it off and you know what's inside? Seeds. And the seeds are hanging from the place that used to be connected to the pumpkin inside. Now normally we'd scoop it out and throw the seeds away or we would toast them and eat them. But what I am going to do, I'm going to take some of these seeds off and put them back into the pumpkin because I am going to plant the seeds. Not in a garden. Nope. I am planting them straight inside the pumpkin. Now I brought some soil and I bought the good kind that will make the seeds grow. It won't happen overnight, I can assure you, because pumpkin seeds take some time to grow. And I put my soil in a bag so I can pour it in there easier. Now, let's get this over here. Pour it right in. Do you notice I didn't take any seeds out? I'm putting the dirt straight in here. Oh, and I'm keeping it pretty much on, in the pumpkin and not on the tabletop. Put it in, pat it down a little, not too hard. You can do this if your family says, oh yeah, we will cut a pumpkin and then we'll do one for a science project. Now, here's the part that happens when I've done this in my classroom. Sometimes my gardener would water it a little too much you don't want to do that because then it makes the pumpkin rot. All pumpkins, once you cut them open, they will rot. They'll stay for a long time. I keep my pumpkin until Thanksgiving time because I use them for my pies and I also put it in my garden because I think it looks pretty out there. Now, I'm getting most of the dirt off of me and I'm going to put a little water in. Come on, little spider, a little water and I'll put that on there. Now, I can put this in a sunny window or I can put it out in my garden. I won't put the lid on because when the sun warms this up and I keep a little water on it, you will see something come growing out of there. And I'll keep it at home and when it first shows its seedlings, I will bring it back to the studio. Let's set this up here because I want to have time. Oh, maybe I'll just leave it here. I want to have time to introduce you to our very interesting artist. Our artist is Yayoi, Yayoi Kusama, and she's from Japan. Now, people here in America know about her because when she was living in Japan, as a little girl, I have her picture right up here. She was the fourth child of a big family, and she lived near her grandma and grandpa, and where they lived was on a squash farm. So she got to know squash, and she thought they were grotesque, which is kind of unusual shape and kind of gnarly and they weren't like other foods that she ate but she loved loved the pumpkin and it reminded of her her of her sweet grandparents so she started doing all kinds of art using a pumpkin here she has giant flowers because later she loved flowers too and did art with her flowers here is what she looks like now she is 91 years old and she lives in a place where she's trying to take good care of herself and I have a picture of her in her wheelchair that I will be showing later in the week. But what we're going to do right now, 
And I want you to know I'm using yellow paper. If you don't have yellow paper, don't worry. Because I want you to know about those pens we've talked about before. They are the ones that are permanent pens. Now on my yellow paper, I'm going to draw a sketch of a pumpkin. You know what a pumpkin looks like. We talked about it before. So I start out with the stem and I draw it on there. I think I'll do it so you can see it and I'll turn it around this way and show you. I sketched it with the pencil. Now I make a curve line and I make it in a bumpy oval right like that. We're just doing the outline today, so don't worry, we won't rush. We're just doing the outline because tomorrow I have planned to do the drawing in. Look how I made the stem kind of snaggletoothed. I'm going to start my pumpkin around its shape. I make a little bump on the bottom and come back around to the top. Now, don't make the lines down the middle. We want it just to look like this because we're going to put dots on there because she, Yayoi, did all of her art with polka dots. So when we do the lines, we're going to make big dots. Now I'd like to sing the song about Yayoi. It goes like this. They called her the princess of polka dots and the song is to um, Davy, Davy Crockett. So it goes, Ya Yoi, Ya Yoi Kusama, Princess of Polka Dots. Pumpkins, dotted pumpkins, ones that will never rot. I told you they rot, but not the one she made. This one weighs 1,800 pounds. She made it out of plastic. She made it out of fiberglass and plastic and got all those dots on there. She is such an interesting artist and each day we're going to be looking at different things she made and the reason was because she loved this Japanese pumpkin. So we're going to bring this back tomorrow so that we can do the dots where the lines go down the pumpkin. We start out drawing great big dots, we do medium sized dots, and we do tiny dots. But you have to use the permanent pen so that it doesn't s smear if we happen to use any paint on it or if we happen to use more markers on it. So if you can come back tomorrow and bring your yellow pumpkin, if you didn't get a chance to draw it today, draw it tonight and maybe someone will give you a permanent pen to use. Where are you singing our old song of goodbye to all my friends? I put a cowboy on there. Ready? Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. Give a wink and oh, give a smile and wink your eye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Boys and girls, I can't wait to show you our art tomorrow. See you then. Bye-bye. Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for 